It's the world's most mysterious book, written by an unknown author. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 creepiest mysteries about the Middle Ages. The one thing we can say for certain is that the person who benefits most from their deaths is Richard. For this list, we'll be looking at the weirdest and most disturbing unsolved mysteries from the 5th to the 15th centuries. Do you have a theory for any of these? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Mysterious Fate of John Cabot and His Crew In 1492, Christopher Columbus landed in the modern-day Bahamas, thinking he was in East Asia. Following this, other merchant ship captains attempted to find alternate routes to Asia. John Cabot was funded by Henry VII in his expeditions. His first was a failure. His second, however, was successful, as he explored a portion of today's Atlantic Canada, still believing he was in Asia. His route is commemorated in the Cabot Strait. John Cabot makes his first landfall in North America, somewhere near Newfoundland or Labrador. In 1497, Cabot once again headed out, hoping to find the island of Chapangu, or Japan. He runs into a number of storms, and he is never officially heard from again. Cabot never returned, and there are theories, but no definite answer as to his and his crew's fates. Did they perish at sea or make an extended stay in the New World? Whatever the outcome of the second voyage, all historians agree that John Cabot is responsible for the first English claims in the New World. Number 9. The Children's Crusade In 1212, two shepherd boys claimed to have received divine visions. Stephen of Cloyes in France and Nicholas of Cologne in Germany. It was as if the voice of God was speaking to us. Do not despair, he cried. I will lead you to the Holy Land. The two amassed thousands of followers, and while 12-year-old Stephen led his to Paris and later Marseille, Nicholas's pilgrims crossed the Alps into Italy. Without any help, they were facing one single enemy, the cruelty of nature. He had promised that the Mediterranean Sea would dry up and allow them to reach the Holy Land, but most died on the journey, and his miracle failed to materialize. The fates of both groups are uncertain. Some accounts have them sold into slavery, others dying in a shipwreck. Many settled in Genoa, Italy. Nicholas may have joined the Fifth Crusade or died crossing back across the Alps. The sources provide no information at all on what really happened in the Alps. The children were certainly the victims of their own carefree abandon. Number 8. The Cern Abbas Giant Located on a hillside in England, this landmark dates back to between 700 and 1100 CE. It's 180 feet high, 167 feet wide, and features a phallus 36 feet in length. The figure is fairly open to interpretation, as researchers have differing opinions. However, it's understood that it's likely linked to fertility. In the past, couples have trekked onto the hillside figure to uh, test it out. The giant is very unique in his appearance, and um, I think people really enjoy that. Others have theorized that it represents Hercules, a Celtic god, or even a satirical caricature of Oliver Cromwell. In the 1930s, a local bishop attempted to have the figure's manhood covered up without success. He still does have an air of mystery. Uh, we haven't sorted it out completely. Number seven, the secret recipe for Greek fire. The name Greek fire primarily refers to the substance used by the Byzantine Greeks in the seventh century CE. Credited to Callinicus of Heliopolis, it was used in naval battles as it continued to burn even on water. A mysterious substance that when ignited burns bright and hot. Greek fire. The lengthy duration of the Byzantine Empire has been linked in part to the use of this incendiary weapon, and the Empire guarded the recipe so diligently that it remains a mystery. What ancient technology spewed this deadly incendiary mixture is not known, only that it was called Greek fire. There are and have been theories as to Greek fire's composition since its conception, which was probably some sort of petroleum-based mixture, but we may never know for sure. Better. My God, you are a magician. Number six, the Voynich Manuscript. Strange documents are usually eventually interpreted, but not this one. The Voynich Manuscript, named after the book dealer who acquired it in 1912, is a 240-page codex from the 15th century. It contains a language that appears to have been invented by its author, as well as numerous illustrations. 
Using the illustrations, interpreters have divided the book into six sections, herbal, astronomical, balneological, or methods of medicinal bathing, cosmological, pharmaceutical, and recipes. This is how you need to cut up your herbs that you've just seen on the preceding pages. The Codex has a long history of attempted decryption, yet no definite interpretation to date. For the time being, the Voynich manuscript remains what it has been for the last 600 years. It's a hall of mirrors reflecting each researcher's own imagination. Number five, Genghis Khan's burial site. Founder of the Mongol Empire, Genghis Khan was a feared, powerful, and ruthless conqueror. History records him as a brutal butcher. Though he was exceptionally successful in his military campaigns, it was at the cost of countless lives, as he and his army eradicated peoples and cultures for territorial gain. Such a man must have a formidable tomb, right? Well, Genghis Khan asked to be buried in secret, and his wishes were honored. His body was probably repatriated to his birthplace, with many precautions taken to conceal his burial place. It is said that his soldiers took his body to an undisclosed location, killing anyone who crossed their path in order to maintain secrecy. After the burial, they rode 1,000 horses over the gravesite. The location has never been found. It is said that a 1,000 horses were driven over his grave until every last trace of Genghis Khan had vanished. Number four, the Norse disappearance from Greenland. Vikings don't seem like they'd be known for their vanishing acts. However, their settlement in Havalsi Fjord in Greenland, established in the late 10th century, was the site of a mysterious disappearance. The Norse built homes, farms, and a church there, and engaged in foreign trade. However, sometime between the 15th and early 18th centuries, the entire population of Havalsi up and vanished. There are no records of their departure or any reasons known as to why. The only thing we know is that in 1721, a Danish missionary stopped by and found a ghost town. Number three, the princes in the Tower of London. In April of 1483, King Edward IV died of illness. The king had two sons in line for the throne, 12-year-old Edward V and nine-year-old Richard of Shrewsbury. The burden of ruling England now rests on the shoulders of a 12-year-old boy. Their paternal uncle, the Duke of Gloucester, took it upon himself to house the two princes in the Tower of London, which was the usual place for those awaiting coronation. The thing is, the two were never seen again. Young Edward will never set foot outside the tower again. There are several theories as to how this happened, yet the most generally accepted one is that the two were murdered by their uncle, who was subsequently crowned king. A small box was found by builders in 1674 containing two small skeletons, yet could not be proven to be the royal remains. There's no reliable record of their death. No bodies are found and no one is put on trial. Number two, the dancing plague. Some medieval mysteries are just plain bizarre. In 1518, in the French city of Strasbourg, a woman named Frau Trophia walked out into the street and began to dance. Things got even stranger when the manic dancing began to spread. Within a week, another 34 people were dancing. Others began to join her performance. And weeks later, between 50 and 400 people were dead from the dancing plague. Doctors had to intervene to put people in hospital. One report from the time claims 15 were dancing themselves to death every day. Theories in the Middle Ages were abundant, such as hot blood or demonic possession. More modern theories include food poisoning or mass hysteria. The cause, however, will likely remain a mystery forever. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number one, the green children of Woolpit. In 12th century Suffolk, England, in the village of Woolpit, villagers found a young boy and girl who spoke an incomprehensible language. Oh, and they had green skin. The children were taken in by a local man, Sir Richard de Calnay. They refused to eat anything until they found a garden of green beans, which they ate with appetite. Over time, the children were converted to a normal diet, which rid them of their verdant complexion, and were taught to speak English. They spoke of how they found themselves transported to Woolpit in an instant from their homeland. 
These days, it's theorized that the children were Flemish and that their green tone was the result of malnourishment. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.